everyone. Welcome to Confidently Be You. My name is Jennifer Shlomovich, and today my special guest is Emily Paznak Lapchik. Emily is the founder of the Chrysalis Exchange, a coaching and co creation practice focused on cultivating accessible coaching services for people engaged in social change work. She offers sliding scale services and creates meaningful partnerships with individuals, teams, and organizations. Emily collaborates with organizations on human-centered design, strategic planning, and facilitation. Prior to coaching, Emily spent a dec decade working in nonprofits, foundations, and academia, where she helped to build and launch nine programs. These include a national awareness and advocacy program on human trafficking and coordinating the redesign of a grant-making program to be more equitable. Emily, welcome. Thank you. I'm really, really excited to be here for our conversation. Me too. And today our topic is about redefining success. Yeah, I'm, um, this has been something that I've been sort of thinking about and really interrogating for myself the last few years. So I'm, I'm excited for this conversation. Yeah, me too. I meant to, I meant to incorporate it in the beginning of my uh, intro to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, so there I slide it in. Yeah. So yeah, I'm really excited about this discussion about redefining success because it's, I think a lot of people, a lot of uh, clients I've worked with have a lot of misconceptions about what success is and isn't. And I know I used to also uh, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We have so many narratives that, that we're told and tend to live by until we start to really think about it for ourselves. Absolutely. So before we jump into our discussion, what inspired you to get into the work that you do? Yeah, great question. Uh, so I will start with, with the origins, which is my parents. Um, both of them were really involved in social change work uh, the whole time I was growing up. So I really thought of social impact and social justice and human rights as just something that people did and worked on. Um, it was very normal for me. So that is what inspired me to start out my career in the nonprofit and foundation space. And then um, I had, a, a you know, times where that work has been really, really meaningful and other times where I've kind of struggled to figure out what my role was. Um, and a couple of years ago, I started working with a coach because I was feeling a little bit lost and disconnected from myself. And that experience was so transformative for me. I'm, I'm getting chills again, just talking about it, mm -hmm. uh, that I felt like, wow, if this was a, a space that I could hold for other people to realign with their values, to figure out what their passions were, and just to create lives that had that felt more fulfilling for them, um, that would be really meaningful for me. So that's what led me to pursue coaching as, as a service and business for myself. That's a beautiful story. Yeah. Coaching really is life changing. Like I didn't really know what coaching was at one point. And then when I discovered it and I was like, oh, that's really what I want to do. And when I went to school uh, to get my coaching certification, um, I, I went there for, you know, to help with my career and what I realized was I uncovered all these other layers within myself. <laughs> I didn't realize were lurking back there. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, and that's that's the beautiful thing about coaching is there's you you peel back all these layers and really uncover all these different parts of yourself that you didn't really realize were there behind the scenes. Yeah, absolutely. I, I had similar experience and know so many people who have just felt that that personal transformation and those big shifts as a result of coaching. So it's beautiful that you've had that experience too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so what are some of those common narratives that are out there about success? Yeah, so this, I mean, th there's so many, right? And and it really does vary from culture to culture. So it it can change depending on your circumstances. A lot of the narratives come from our family. A lot of the narratives come from the communities that we grew up in, the cultures that we've worked in, in different aspects of our career. Um, but, you know, generally, especially under a lot of like the isms that we live under, and I'll probably mention capitalism a few times during our <laughs> conversation, um, 
a lot of it is focused on, you know, how can I make a lot of money? How can I go to college? Can I buy a house? Can I climb the ladder at work? Um, maybe being in a long-term relationship, raising a family. I mean, the list can go on and on. Um, and if we start to break that down, if success means more money, if success means constantly climbing up at work or striving for a higher position, if success means being in a long-term relationship, if, if success means fitting into all these social norms, a lot of those concepts are really, you know, striving for more, more, more. Mm -hmm. And what happens when we're always looking for more and when we're always looking for the next thing is we're never really satisfied. We, we're lacking that fulfillment because when we're always looking for what's next, we're not focused on what it is that's, that's bringing us joy in the day-to-day -day that feels valuable to us. Um, and part of what also happens is we get into this comparison trap where we're mm -hmm. looking at other people who fit into these narratives of what we've been told is successful or what it looks like to be successful. Um, and, you know, with, with social media nowadays, oh, yeah. <laughs> especially, <laughs> there's so much of this kind of almost performance that many of us put on um, that isn't necessarily real. And we don't see all like the messy parts and and we also don't see a lot of the um, the parts that have to do like outside of career too. I feel like career is such a, a focus around success. Um, so, you know, some of the things that, that you can start to think about is if, you, if you're at a place in your career where you really love your job and you love the work that you do and you're in a good position and you're making enough income to feel, you know, to have stability, then what does it mean to have, to feel that need to grow to grow and to go up in, in the corporate ladder and one of the things that i started realizing as i started advancing in organizations was that a lot of that like work that was really meaningful to me i started doing less and less of it i started doing like more of the administrative work more mm -hmm. of the budgeting more of the leadership and i found satisfaction in other ways um but in some ways i lost kind of like the essence and the passion of what i was doing um, so yeah, I'll, I'll kind of pause there and, and see what your, your responses are. Yeah, I, I can resonate with what you're saying. It's interesting before our interview, I haven't asked myself what my definition is for success in a long time. So I was kind of curious because our definitions for things can change. Our values can change and things can change as we evolve and change. And I, so I asked myself what my definition is for success. And I was actually surprised that it's feeling happy with who you are while taking action towards the things you want. And mm. when, and, and so that just fits in everything you were saying, because before I used to be like, oh, my career has to be a certain place. I have to be married. I have to be this. I have to, you know, all these different things, you know, the social conditioning, and especially career and money, I think has always been like the big pressure on me and a lot of people. Um, and so to see that that definition changed for me, that it's just about being happy about where you are while also reaching towards the things that you, because if we need something to fill a void, if we're happy, if, if we need something to make us happy, it's not really going to make us happy because we're trying to fill like this empty hole. That's just, it's going to be like a black hole where you're just like, and then like what you were saying, always chasing that next best thing. Um, there was a podcast I listened to a couple of years ago where they were talking about this and they're like, it's, it's like ch chasing the horizon. Like you get to the horizon, it's just mm -hmm. going to keep going and going and going. There's really no end to it. So seeing that definition, I, it really showed me that there's been a lot of inner shifts within myself that I kind of knew, but just by asking myself that simple question, I realized how much I've evolved in the past couple of years. Yeah, I, I love the metaphor of the horizon. That That's a really, really beautiful one. Um, and it is, it can be powerful when we ask ourselves simple questions that sometimes we just we don't create space for in our lives. And when we do that, so much can come out of that that can give us so much insight into what it is that we actually want. 
Absolutely. And, and, and that's the big key word right there is creating space. And, and that's a big part of the coaching work that we do is we help other people create that space because there's that common misconception where you have to wait for the right time before you can do something. And uh, a big inspiration for me, and I've shared this on uh, YouTube before on social media is my mom, she used to say, oh, you know, I'm going to do this one day. I'm going to do this one day, what various things. And then she ended up having a heart attack and died. And I, I call that the one day trap. And we don't, we don't have one day. There's never, the stars are never going to be in alignment. It's, there's never a perfect time. If you want something, then you have to create space for it. And that also goes back to, you know, some of the things that you were talking about a little bit ago, it's, 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 you know, looking at the things that are important to you, really understanding what your why is, you know, if you don't understand what your why is, otherwise you're just going to be, I need more money. Well, why do you want more money? Maybe, maybe it's not the money. Maybe it's actually something else you want, but you think the money is going to get it for you, but maybe actually that thing is something you can actually achieve without having to put oodles of pressure on yourself to go make so much more money. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I think we do, we do learn so much from the other people in our lives and can sort of reassess and readjust based on that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for me, my dad was what, like a huge role model for me growing up. He, he really loves his work. He does such incredible work in social justice and and he does a lot of work. He travels a lot. He works late. He often works on weekends. He runs multiple organizations. He's written over 10 books. I mean, this man is like a powerhouse. Um, and I really looked up to that. Like that was my model. And that was my vision for mm -hmm. how I was going to make an impact in the world too. And, and what my role could be. Um, so when I started out, that, that was really my aspiration. I had my, my, vision set on being high up on leading organizations. Um, and as time went on, I really burned out like over and over and over again. Um, and I still love my job, but I realized that the way that it was impacting me and the way that it, it was kind of taking over my life just wasn't sustainable for me. Um, and that led me to, to take a few steps back and start asking myself what, what it was that I wanted. Um, thinking about what it was that brought me energy, what my values were, how I wanted to be spending my time, who I wanted to be spending my time with, um, and then starting to kind of rearrange my life as a result of that. Right. It's that creating space piece and, 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 and you assessed everything like, well, what's well, not working for me right now. And, you know, what, it, what do I feel would work better for me? And then it's, it's taking that action. It's, you it's the plan, it's the assessing, the planning, and then the taking action piece, where I think a lot of people, and, and I used to get into this, and my mom did too, is being stuck in the planning phase for, for too long. So it's important to, yes, assess, you plan, but then you have to like push yourself to start taking that action. And even the smallest action <laughs> consistently will eventually lead to a big shift over time. Yeah, absolutely. It's sometimes it can, I'm thinking of that horizon again, but like sometimes when we have our, our sights set on something, um, it can seem so far away, but just, you know, as you said, putting one foot in front of the other and figuring out what are the, the small actions I can take today or this week, or even this month to work towards cultivating what I want. Um, that's how you, you get there over time. Right, exactly. Because even, even if you're moving at a snail's pace, <laughs> the snail is still moving. <laughs> It'll yeah. eventually get to the other side of the sidewalk. <laughs> um, yeah, great. It's, it sounds like you're doing some really amazing and important work in the community with, with everything that you're doing. And so to get back onto the success, how have you redefined success uh, for yourself? Yeah, great question. And, and I really want to emphasize something you shared earlier, which is that this, this change changed for you over time. Um, so this is really something that is constantly evolving. I don't think for any of us, we can have one definition of success 
like for our whole life because our values change, our priorities change, mm -hmm. um, our circumstances change. So I, I feel really, you know, ha after having gone through this for myself, I feel really passionately that we have to create that space on a, on a pretty consistent basis, not all the time, but to ask ourselves, what does success mean to me? Um, how do mm -hmm. I want to define it? And how do I want to think? And how do I want to be? Um, so yeah, as I, as I mentioned, I've really spent the last few years uh, starting to, to interrogate that for myself. Um, and right now in this moment, uh, one of my big priorities is like leisure and rest. Mm. I want more things that bring me joy. I want more time to just cuddle on my couch with my cat. Um, I want more quality time with people that I love. And I don't want to be worrying about work when I'm doing any of those things. Um, I, of course, I, I love coaching and my work is really meaningful and I want my work to be meaningful, but I don't want to be defined by work. And I think that's one of the biggest, I just got chills again. I did too. When you said that, I was like, ooh. <laughs> Um, that's one of like the biggest shifts that I felt for myself because for a long time, so much of my identity was caught up with work. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I, I feel like it's become so much more expansive. Um, and also for me, I think another thing that's evolved over time, it's another version of success for me is really figuring out how I can use the privileges that I have as a white woman, as someone who has been able to have an income that sustains me, who grew up with money, um, and figure out ways that I can be redistributing wealth, that I can be redistributing opportunities, redistributing access. Um, and that's, I mean, the reason I do sliding scale coaching services is so that more people can experience the power of coaching because so much of the coaching industry is really reserved for people who are higher up in leadership positions. And I think there's so much opportunity for people from all different walks of life and all different levels of organizations and even people who aren't being paid to work um, to experience coaching and experience the, the transformative nature of that. Um, so I think that's that was another thing for me in defining success and like detaching the, um, the notion of success from money, mm -hmm. um, because in building my business, I'm not as focused on, you know, making a six figure business or all these things. I'm really focused on how I'm living my values through my work and using the place of privilege that I've, that I've been in for so much of my life to be able to create more access and opportunities for people in the, you know, and I'm, I'm not naive to think that sliding scale coaching is going <laughs> to, is going to change equity. But I think that that's something that for me was, is really important to me. Um, and again, that, that detachment of wealth and success and income and success has been a really important thing for me to reframe as well. That's really beautiful. And you're right. It's, it's coaching can be very expensive and a lot of it is on the high end uh, price tag, which it, it's such amazing work and can be so life-changing that all, all people can benefit from coaching. And, and I think that's amazing that you've created space to help those who wouldn't be able to afford it otherwise. And, and that's going to have an impact too, because you help one person, even just one person, and that person has a family and the things that they benefit from that is going to help them and, and, and trickle down from, from all of that. Yeah. And, and so, um, it's great that you've created a, a way to help all types of people. Yeah. And I, I think another thing that has, that just came up for me while you were talking to is, you know, so many of us, whether we're conscious of it or not, have been able to pursue careers or pursue jobs um, because of, and, and so much of our society functions because of unpaid labor, whether mm. those are, you know, parents, stay-at-home parents, whether those are children who are caretakers for the elderly, whether, you know, the, I think there's, um, many of us couldn't go to work every day and couldn't pursue the careers that we love or the passions that we have 
um, if we didn't have that, that backbone to our society that's allowing us to do so much of that. Um, mm -hmm. And on success, you can be really successful as a stay-at-home parent. You can be really successful at doing unpaid labor. You can be really successful at doing like creating art in your free time and not having it attached to that monetary value. Um, so I think this is, you know, this is like for me, a, a capitalistic narrative that we need to break is that tie between success and money. And when we do that and create the space for people to reframe success and define it in their own ways, that can be can be really powerful. And we, as a society, can start to value all sorts of things in a different way. Absolutely. And, you know, as you were talking, the word that came to me is liberating. It's liberating when you just focus on the things that bring you joy and happiness that are meaningful for you without tying that money piece to it, because it, it puts a lot of pressure yeah. When, when we get into that lack mindset and, and it, and it creates, a, it creates that discontent. And there are people who do have a lot of money who are not happy. They, they're not, they don't enjoy anything because they're too busy trying to make money. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really great to be shedding that light to show others that, you know, your, your, your success doesn't have to have a dollar sign on it. It doesn't have to be about what you're making. And parenting is a very rewarding job. And, and to be able to, you know, help a human being evolve and grow <laughs> before you send them out into society is also very important work yeah. as well. And oh, one other thing too, I wanted to jump back as you were speaking a little bit ago about taking time for, you know, doing things that are happy, that are happy for you, that are fun to do. And I started doing that. My theme for February was trying to incorporate fun okay. back into my life because, and I, and I took a pause for my channel for the month of February because I needed to just take up, like I was recording interviews, but I wasn't posting content. I just needed to take a break from it. And I, I haven't done a puzzle in a really long time. So I started working on a puzzle here and there. I started, you know, doing things for, and it felt awkward at first because I'm, you know, working full time. And then I also have a family. I have a 16 year old son and my husband. And so, you know, trying to find time with them and then also time creating for my business and supporting clients and like all these different things that I felt guilty for having fun, but I realized I know the value of having fun and I help my own clients find, <laughs> carve out that space for them, <laughs> but I wasn't doing it for myself. So February, my theme was fun. And so that included doing a puzzle that included just watching something for the fun of it, reading something for the fun of it that didn't have to be some type of personal development or coach related thing. And just, it really was very helpful because when, when you do that, it's actually productive because you, when you really, when you alleviate that pressure and especially when you haven't given yourself that space to have fun, to go back and do things just for fun, there, it, there's something luxurious about that. <laughs> Even though I wasn't doing anything luxurious, I was doing a puzzle, but it just shows <laughs> how like the simplest things yeah. can, can make such a big difference for our well-being and, and how it's important to have that fun. And, and you don't need to have tons of money to live a life that's meaningful and fulfilled. And, and so, yeah, it's once you take that time to shift your focus on, you know, your values and the things that are important to you and, and really assess all of those things, it can be a really big game changer. Yeah. I love that you took that month <laughs> to reconnect with fun and to do puzzles and to, to do those things that bring you joy. And I also love that you highlighted that you're supporting clients to do it, but sometimes you weren't doing it for yourself. Um, and you know, yeah. even just a, like 
so often as coaches, sometimes I'm in a, in a session with a client. I'm like, Oh, oh, like I leave it. And I think I need to do that too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's many times that those, those sessions reflect something back to me where I'm like, Oh, you know what? <laughs> should be doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, it's when you're, when you're doing work where you're helping others, it's, it's very easy to like lose sight of, of helping yourself, which is also something very common that parents, parents do too. Like a lot of moms feel, you know, guilty for doing something that's not benefiting the family in, yeah. in some way. And, and I know a lot of moms who, you go through a period of time where you lose your identity and you, you don't know who you are after you bring in this human being because who you were before the baby, now you're like, oh my God, I'm a parent. And then you everything becomes about them. And it's very easy to lose, lose that identity and, and, and try to go back and figure that out. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely, uh, you know, on point. And I, like earlier you were saying how meaningful it can be to raise, to raise a human being and, and, you know, you're in, you're mentoring them, you're showing them how to navigate life. There's so much, I mean, arguably the most valuable job yeah. that anyone does is, is being a parent or being a caregiver and, and raising a child or, or children into this world. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is very very important work. This has been such a great conversation and I'm so glad that you came on here to, you know, talk about this and share your perspective on this really important topic. And before we wrap up, um, what are some tips, uh, what are some, I'm getting tongue tied out. (laughs) What are some success tips that you could share uh, for anyone who's watching this? Yeah, I, um, I mean, this is a a great question. And I've thought about this a lot. Um, I think, I think it's just so important for us to consider, like the question that you asked yourself before this session, like, what Mm -hmm. does success mean to me? It's so, so much of the narratives are so cultural, or, you know, we, we experience them as a community. But the definition, your own definition of it, doesn't have to be that it can be like so deeply personal so really the bottom line here is it it doesn't matter what how I've defined success or how Jen has defined success this is true (laughs) yeah it doesn't matter what anyone else in the whole freaking world defines like it it matters what you want so what life do you want And the more that you're able to connect with yourself, to understand your values, to understand what you want space for in your life. One of the questions I love to ask clients is, what would you like more space for? Mm, I like that question a lot. (laughs) I'm writing that down for myself (laughs) later. (laughs) Yeah, because how often are we asked that? You know, and then, and also thinking about what do I want to do less of? Like what, what's really Mm. draining me and, and what are the opportunities that I have to reduce some of that in my life? So I can make space for the things that I want. Um, And just depending on how you process, I mean, if you, if you enjoy journaling, that can be a wonderful way to do it. If you enjoy meditating, you can meditate around. There are even some meditations focused on like think envisioning success for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you like to be like, if, if you love to have generative conversations with people, then find like a friend or a coworker or someone you trust or someone who you look up to you and you admire their life and have a conversation with them around success just so you can start to think about what different narratives exist and then figure out which one feels good to you. Um, And I think that, you know, when you're thinking about the narratives of that you've received around success, also try to tap into when you hear those narratives, how does it make you feel? Mm. Does it feel heavy? Does it feel like a weight? Does it feel exciting and enticing? 
And those can give you indications of whether that definition or that narrative of success feels aligned for you. I love that. That is, you're right. You're right. That's very, very important to do. Journaling has literally changed my life when I started doing it back in 2010, because it made me realize a lot of things that I was ignoring and it really opened up a Pandora's box for a little bit because <laughs> I went through some rapid changes, went through a divorce, went, did a lot of work on myself, went to therapy, all these things that I was not acknowledging mm. in my life that I didn't want to admit. I finally opened up in my journal and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and, and, and so one of the things I've, I've shared before with people is journaling. It, it's like you're, you're, it's like, it helps me become my own best friend to me, if that makes sense, mm. because I'm allowed to, one of my favorite things that I do, I still do it to this day. And it started back in 2010, when I started to really take an honest look at my life is I love to go to a coffee shop by myself or a cafe once in a while with my journal. And then I'll just, you know, sip tea or coffee and have something. And I'm just sitting by myself. And there's something that is very like liberating and comforting and just allows for that connection. Cause at home, I, I could do the same thing at home, but I can easily get distracted. I feel like it's a different energy, but by taking myself out, like I did this yesterday, actually, there's a coffee shop, like 10 minute walk from me. So I, I went there and I brought my journal and I just needed 10 minutes to myself journaling in a completely different location. <laughs> um, but getting back to what you were saying is yeah, that journaling, journaling exercises are so very important and really, cause we don't, everything's a jumble in our heads. Like we don't, we know things, but we don't really know. Cause we, we have all this like mental clutter that's yes. there. And, and then when we unpack that in journaling or in a coaching session or a therapy session, some external processing of the things that are just floating around back there, create that space. An analogy I like to use with clients a lot is think about you have an attic or a basement and it's filled with boxes and you want to create a family room, but you got to go through all these boxes and you kind of have an idea mm -hmm. that, oh, there's something from this move made, but you don't really know what's in there until you're actually opening it. And then you're like, oh my God, I forgot about this. And then you realize, do I want to keep this? Do I want to donate this? And, and then you clear through all of that. And now you have this room that you can recreate and repurpose into something else. And our thoughts are the exact same way. And, and by, you know, doing journaling and asking these questions, there's been so many times people have told me, I've never thought of this before. I've never sat down and asked myself this before. And, and that's, that's such a simple thing can be so powerful and eye-opening. Wow. I, I'm going to, I'm now I'm going to borrow that from you. <laughs> that, Go for it. <laughs> that exercise can be so to this conversation around success. Like what, what has worked for me in the past? Mm -hmm. What do I want to continue carrying forward? What boxes feel like a bit too heavy or they don't fit my aesthetic anymore, or, or like they're not fitting my vibe and the life that I want. And we're going to, you know, give them away or donate them or, or throw them in the trash, whatever. Yeah. Them. Um, so I, I love that exercise. That's, that's really cool. Awesome. I'm, I'm glad you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was so great having you on here. Um, was there any other resources or tips you'd like to share before we wrap up? Um, I think that the last thing that I wanted to say is you know, when, once you redefine success for yourself, you're probably going to face a lot of questions mm -hmm. and some interrogation from other people in your life. And I have had, in, in my experience, I've had to spend time almost convincing other people around why this, this new definition or this new vision for my life is meaningful for me. Um, and some of that can be hard, depending on the person you're having the conversation with. Some of that can 
open people in your in your life's ideas around their own assumptions and their own mm-hmm. narratives around success and you can actually help them to start thinking about it um but that's just something to consider you know how are you preparing yourself to to share this out and to express it um, and to to stand firm in your belief and the things that you define for yourself and you know it can be easy to fall back into that trap of you know just going back into the norms and the expectations that others have of us um so even you know you don't have to convince anyone it like your definition is 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 what's going to work for you and just knowing that and standing firmly rooted in that can make a huge um a huge difference so that's the last thing I wanted to say. And, um, and I've, you know, again, just had a, a wonderful conversation. I feel like I could go on and on about this, but um, it's been a huge pleasure and in, in just exploring this topic more with you. I, I, I'm really happy you made it. And, and, you know, if you ever want to come back and talk about another topic, you know, you're welcome to come back <laughs> and, and have that, just have a discussion. Um, I just wanted to circle back to what you were saying. You're absolutely right because people are used to us being a certain way. And when we changed our way of being, mm. there are going to be people who might embrace that. And then there might be certain people who won't embrace that, especially those who might have benefited from you being a certain way. Maybe they relied on you. Maybe you weren't setting boundaries with them and you were giving so much of your energy to them. And so that's a, such of an important point to bring up is being prepared of that pushback that you might have from, from other people. Um, it's especially when it like I, I, for example, I've been vegan now for almost five years and I'm the only vegan in my family. So, I'm all vegan, so. oh, great. Well, <laughs> something else we could talk about another time. <laughs> um, yeah. So that I get all kinds of questions and like my, my husband's very supportive of it, but you know, I, what, I let them, you know, I still cook non-vegan stuff for my family because I'm being supportive of them and I'm not pushing my stuff on them, but I'm still going to do me. (laughs) And, and so we found a way to create space for everyone to coexist that works for them. But from like other family members, I'll get like all these questions. about where do you get your protein from and you know don't you crave me you know all those different things and an old version of myself I used to be such a people pleaser and I used to be afraid to like let people down and getting really clear on you know I wanted to be vegan for a long time and can you know like you were saying standing firmly rooted and what was important to me and why that's important to me and, and just creating that space of, okay, you can do you, I'm not going to push my veganism (laughs) on you, but in the same return, this is who I am. Please don't push (laughs) other things on me. And, and, you know, 10 years ago, that would have been something hard for me to do to stand firmly in that and, and feel like I'm different from other people and, and anyway, that's just one example uh, that came to mind. And, you know, and what you were saying is, you know, when you make changes to your lifestyle, whatever that might be, a career, relationship changes, friend changes with friendships, maybe there's just certain friends that are draining you and, and they're not really, the, they're, you know, supportive. Uh, and, and so going through that detox of relationships and just other things that don't serve you it was a very great point that you brought up there and just bringing that to the awareness of you know you might get some pushback on that and and when you're prepared to handle something before it happens then it helps you stay firmly rooted in who you are and and what's important to you because you're not being blindsided by what's happening yeah Absolutely. And, and the more, um, I think also the more clear we are on it for ourselves, Mm -hmm. it's definitely uncomfortable when we first start sharing it, because as you say, other people have a vision of who we are, 
mm-hmm. how we show up, how we interact with them. And when we disrupt that, it can make people go like this. And, and sometimes there's a lot of curiosity and a lot of excitement and people who are like hyping you up and excited to see you breaking into that part of yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and other times people are like, this, I don't know how I feel about this. And maybe <laughs> they're, you know, they're not so comfortable. They have lots of questions and all the things in between. So, um, so yeah, I think the more clear you are on it for yourself, the more confidently you'll speak about it. And the more that you you know, start having those conversations, it also just gets easier. Um, And the more you step into yourself and your authentic self and show up in that way, the easier it becomes. Absolutely. Well said. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you again for, you know, coming and having this really amazing conversation with me. Um, How can people connect with you? Yeah, so I am really active on my Instagram account. Uh, mm-hmm. It's at chrysalis underscore exchange. And I know that's, it's a complicated word. So I know it'll be in the, in the yeah, notes. Yeah, I'll put all links in the show notes <laughs> below. Yeah. So yeah, it's just a click away. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm also pretty active on LinkedIn. And I, I just really love connecting with people. I love hearing about your stories. I love hearing your questions that you have um, and connecting with you know people who are, involved in social impact, want to be engaged in it, or are, are coaching, are not coaching, are interested in it, like all across the board. I just, I love hearing people's stories and sort of where they're coming from. And I would love to hear, you know, how your new definitions of success that you come up with after this conversation too. Love that. And if you want to put in the comments below this video, if you want to share your definitions for success, that would be amazing too. <laughs> I love that. Awesome. Emily, it was a pleasure having you. And uh, you're welcome to come back to discuss something else sometime if you like. And I will put all of the notes and the links in the show notes below. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.